Deep beneath the surface of Singapore lies a realm where engineering meets nature in a delicate balance. As the city embarks on the construction of its longest fully underground MRT line, stretching over 50 kilometers and diving as deep as 70 meters in some areas, this massive infrastructure project, the Cross Island Line or CRL, will revolutionize travel across the island, connecting key hubs and slashing commute times for thousands of residents. With over 12 stations planned in its first phase, the CRL promises to transform public transport by 2030. But as it navigates through Singapore's dense urban environment and fragile natural reserves, one can only wonder, what will the future hold for this ambitious line amidst such formidable challenges? Singapore's rapid urban growth and increasing population have put enormous pressure on its transport network. As the city-state evolved into a global financial hub, the need for an efficient, reliable, and fast transport system became imperative. With a population of nearly 6 million and countless daily commuters, the existing infrastructure was no longer sufficient to meet the growing demand. Commuter trains were overcrowded, and travel times across the island were getting longer, making the need for a new solution more urgent than ever. The introduction of Singapore's Mass Rapid Transit or MRT system in 1987 was a milestone, changing the way people moved across the island. Over the years, the network has expanded significantly, connecting key areas of the island and serving millions of commuters every day. However, as the city expanded vertically and horizontally, the MRT system also faced increasing challenges. With the bustling urban centers in the eastern, western, and northeastern parts of Singapore struggling with congestion, something revolutionary was needed. This is where the Cross Island Line comes in, a game-changing development that aims to solve Singapore's transport woes. At over 50 kilometers long, the Cross Island Line is set to become Singapore's longest fully underground railway. Once completed, it'll connect key hubs on the island and provide an alternative to the already congested East-West Line. The new line is set to significantly reduce travel times for commuters across the island, with some journeys cut by more than half. In addition, the Cross Island Line will feature multiple interchange stations, providing commuters with greater flexibility and improved public connectivity. Construction of the Cross Island Line officially began in 2023, marking the start of one of Singapore's largest infrastructure projects. The line will be rolled out in phases, with the first section expected to be operational by 2030. But as the construction progresses and the vision of a faster, more efficient commute nears reality, one can't help but wonder how did engineers manage to carve out this sprawling underground network through Singapore's densely packed urban sprawl and delicate natural reserves. The CRL will be rolled out in three phases, with the first expected to be operational by 2030. This project has required some of the most advanced construction techniques and machinery to overcome a variety of technical and environmental challenges, turning the construction into a complex yet thrilling engineering feat. The core of the construction process revolves around tunneling, a crucial aspect due to the entire line being underground. To achieve this, tunnel boring machines or TBMs have been deployed. These TBMs are highly specialized pieces of machinery designed to bore through various types of earth and rock. The giant cutter head at the front of the machine is capable of cutting through everything from soft clay to the hardest bedrock. This cutter head rotates as it digs, removing soil and rock and transporting the debris out of the tunnel using a belt conveyor. These machines work relentlessly, digging anywhere between 4 to 20 meters per day depending on the ground conditions. To maximize efficiency and reduce the need for multiple tunnels, the TBMs used for the CRL are equipped with large cutter heads, some as large as 12.6 meters in diameter about the height of a four-story building. This allows the machines to dig a single tunnel that can accommodate two tracks, instead of having to bore separate tunnels for each track. As the TBM advances, it also installs the tunnel walls using precast concrete segments, which are carefully fitted into place by a segment erector. These segments form rings that create a stable, waterproof tunnel. What sets this project apart is not only the size and scope of the tunneling, but also the depth at which it takes place. While most underground MRT lines in Singapore are constructed at a depth of around 20 to 30 meters, the CRL goes much deeper in certain areas. One section under the Central Catchment Nature Reserve will reach a depth of 70 meters, the deepest MRT tunnel in Singapore's history. This decision was made after six years of public consultation and environmental studies to minimize the impact on the Nature Reserve's ecosystem. The depth allows the tunnel to avoid disrupting the surface environment, ensuring that no major construction takes place above ground in sensitive areas. 
At Pasiris, one of the stations along the CRL, the depth will be particularly notable. This station will be constructed 47 meters underground, making it the deepest station in the entire MRT network. The depth, combined with the station's location in a densely populated area, presents unique challenges. Specialized equipment, including low headroom cranes, will be used to navigate the tight space available for construction. Additionally, diaphragm walls will be built to stabilize the station's foundation and prevent groundwater from seeping in. These walls act as a barrier, preventing the movement of water while supporting the deep excavation needs for the station. Waterproofing is a key concern when building tunnels and stations deep underground, especially in an island nation like Singapore, where groundwater levels can pose significant challenges. To combat this, engineers have incorporated water stops into the diaphragm walls. These water stops, placed between concrete panels, create impermeable seals that prevent water from penetrating the joints between the panels. In some sections, a technique called overcutting is used. This involves cutting notches into adjacent concrete slabs so that when the final slab is poured, the notch fills with concrete, forming an additional seal. These methods ensure that the tunnels and stations remain dry and safe for operation. Despite these advancements, the construction of the CRL has not been without its challenges. The varied ground conditions across Singapore necessitate different tunneling techniques at various sections of the line, as some areas consist of soft marine clay, while others are made up of extremely hard rock. Large diameter TBMs are employed in tougher rock formations, while other machines handle softer soil. A particularly demanding stretch of the CRL is the tunnel beneath the central catchment nature reserve, running 40 meters below ground to minimize surface disruption. Detailed soil investigations were conducted to assess the ground suitability for tunneling, and extensive environmental impact studies were carried out to protect the reserve's biodiversity. The tunnel's alignment was carefully chosen to reduce environmental impact, with engineers opting to dig deeper in certain areas to avoid fragile ecosystems. Although this decision increased costs, it preserved the reserve and provided a direct MRT route. Ultimately, cutting journey times by around six minutes and enhancing environmental sustainability. In addition to these technical challenges, the CRL's construction must navigate Singapore's dense urban environment, with many stations situated in built-up areas where space is limited. At Tech Gi Station, a regular TBM will create underground linkways beneath the north-south corridor, minimizing surface disruption. Similar techniques are used at other stations, including Loyang. The Changi East Depot, spanning 57 hectares, will serve as the operations control center, maintaining up to 70 trains and featuring photovoltaic solar panels for renewable energy. Many stations will also incorporate hybrid cooling systems to enhance energy efficiency, reflecting Singapore's commitment to sustainability. The challenges of constructing the CRL are immense, but the potential rewards are equally significant. Once completed, the line will reduce travel times, ease pressure on existing MRT lines, and improve connectivity, ensuring that 8 out of 10 households are within a 10-minute walk of a station. Expected to serve over 600,000 daily commuters by 2030, this number is projected to rise to over a million later. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, subscribe, and turn on notifications for more exciting content.